hope that the books will come out um, ahead of the show. But at the same time, uh, George has his process, and if it takes him 20 years to finish the series, that's what it should take him. I mean, he's writing, uh, to my mind, the great epic of, of our, uh, the great fantasy epic, anyway, of our time. So um, we can't rush him, and I wouldn't want to rush him. And and at the same time, we can't put the show on hiatus. You know, we've got all these actors, <coughs> wonderful cast. I mean, I think the greatest cast ever assembled for a television show. And we can't take a two-year break because, you know, these guys are in demand and they're going to go off and do other stuff. So we have to kind of keep pushing forward. Luckily, we've been talking about this with George for a long time, ever since we saw this could happen. And uh, um, we know where things are, are heading. So. Um, we'll eventually basically meet up at pretty much the same place where George is going. Um, there might be a few deviations along the route, but, but um, we're heading towards the same destination. Uh, I, f I, I kind of wish there were some things that we didn't have to spoil, you know, in terms of for the books, but we're kind of stuck between a rock and a hard place. Um, so the show, has, the show must go on. <laughs> Hey YouTubers, it's Charlie. This is going to be my Daenerys video. I just added that clip of Samwell and Jon Snow for context. I know there's a lot of questions about the show changing things from the books, but it's just a good example that they're all trying to get to the same place. So that kind of figures into some of the predictions that I'm going to make. As awesome as it is to see like the really big WTF book moments happen on screen, it's also kind of fun to try and figure out what they changed and why they changed stuff. Most of the time it's just in service of the cast that they already have. Like, you know, they cast X number of people, pay them millions of dollars in salary. So sometimes that means changing the book story to accommodate that. Specific to Daenerys' story, I think some of the changes that they're going to make in season five are in service of making it more interesting visually. Really quick reminder to new round of the giveaway starts now. All you have to do to enter is be a subscriber and leave a comment on this video. It's an Amazon gift card. In a couple weeks, whenever they start rolling it out, I'll, I'll change it and it'll be the HBO subscription service. So just general spoiler warning for everything through the season four finale. I'll give an extra special warning with a, a spoiler tag in case it's necessary. So here we go. Number five prediction. Daenerys' dragons will still be connected to her, but they'll be completely uncontrollable. Daenerys' dragons are still bonded to her, but they're getting bigger and bigger. Even though Viserion and Rhaegal are, are chained up underneath the pyramid, they are super pissed, and that is not going to change. Then we have to talk about Drogon. He, he's kind of like off on his own. If you remember episode one from season four, that that first scene with him when it when it reveals how big he gets, that's a really good template. Yeah, he's all nice and puppy dog in her lap, but the minute she tries to stop him from eating food, he snaps at her. Just imagine that getting worse. There isn't a hard and fast rule about how big dragons can get. There isn't like an upper limit that they can't go beyond. It just depends on how much they eat. Balerion the Black Dread is always used as the benchmark. This is actually, this is a picture of him being ridden, so you get an idea for the scale. Looking at Drogon in the trailer, he doesn't look a whole lot bigger than he was in Season 4. He was already really big. He is big enough to be ridden. You know, maybe not by the mountain, even though that's a, a pretty horrifying thought. That would be that'd be pretty crazy. You guys can let me know whether you agree or not, but I feel like in Season 4, he was big enough for Daenerys to ride him. George R.R. Martin's Princess and the Queen short story covers a lot of the science behind dragon bonding. So if you do have extra time before Episode 1 airs, you should totally check it out. If not, don't, don't worry. Any of the big WTF stuff that happens, the show, you know, might not explain it in explicit detail, but they do try to make it logical enough to follow. I know a lot of people will argue that too. Like, sometimes the twists don't seem super logical, but I think that they do try to make them logical. So what do dragons going crazy in Season 5 mean? Mostly that they're going to tear shit up in a much bigger way than they did in Season 4. Think like what the next logical step is from roasting goats and stray children, stepping it up to like roasting large groups of people. On to number four, the second battle of Marine. As seen in the trailer, the next battle of Marine will be a civil war between the slave owners and Daenerys. Because episode four is titled Sons of the Harpy and these mass people are fighting Unsullied, I think that they're the Sons of the Harpy. Daenerys' story is mostly confined to book five, and one of the big problems I think the show had to address is that it's largely political intrigue, and unless your name is Littlefinger, political intrigue is really hard to do on screen in a visually interesting way. Like, it's not like Daenerys is going to move into a brothel so she can do all the politicking around a bunch of naked people. That's why I think the show, whenever it's, it's doing Daenerys' storyline, is going to lean much more heavily on the conflict with the Sons of the Harpy. There's like this fine balance between character moments, like scenes inside Daenerys' throne room, and big WTF action moments, like big battles. That's where I think the Sons of the Harpy come in. This kind of gets into South Park titties and dragons territory. If you've never seen the South Park Game of Thrones episodes, you totally need to watch them before season five starts. It's probably one of the best parodies of Game of Thrones ever. They can be kind of reductive in the way they parody Song of Ice and Fire stuff, but they are spot on. It's all titties and dragons. 
Boobs are like a metaphor for the HBO sex factor. The double meaning with the, the dragon's joke is just the ultra violence. Because Daenerys' storyline is kind of stationary in book five, I think the show is just going to crank up the titties and dragons, metaphorically speaking. Maybe literally, too. After season three, I think there were some comments from Amelia Clark about nudity clauses in her contract, but that remains to be seen. I think it was just that she wasn't going to do, like, full frontal anymore. It didn't mean she wasn't going to do sex scenes. So the easy solution to making Daenerys' storyline more interesting in season five is doing more crazy Sons of the Harpy stuff from the books. On to number three, the show is going to change the identity of the Harpy from the books. Take this with a grain of salt because officially Martin hasn't revealed who the Harpy is. I think the show is going to make his Darth the Harpy. That just feels like a logical WTF reveal for them to make given what his storyline is in the books. In the actual books, I think the Harpy is the Green Grace, a female character, but we haven't seen her on the show yet and it doesn't look like she was cast for season five. That's all just speculation. There is this woman in the trailer that mysteriously looks like she's handing out blessings to a bunch of slaves. It could be in Volantis, it could be somewhere else. She kind of looks like Jessica Henwick, who's playing Nymeria Sand, but I don't think this is Dorne, and I don't think this is Nymeria Sand. This person is probably just one of the minor female characters that they've cast in the, the Volantis, Bravos, Marine stuff that they haven't announced yet, that they haven't revealed. There are a couple minor female characters that they haven't completely revealed yet, like where they are or what their names are. Like I said, Hisdar Harpy would just be the logical WTF reveal for them to make, given what's going on in the book. So I'm just going to put this spoiler tag up so I can explain a little bit better. Here we go. The last couple of seasons, Daenerys has been courted by a couple really big men. Hisdar is just the latest in that line. If she accepts his proposal in season five, it would be a very easy slam dunk for them to reveal that he's the one leading the Sons of the Harpy, the insurgent force that's trying to kick her out of Marine. The betrayal plot would also fit thematically with the Mother Dragon's prophecy. Light three fires, ride three mounts, face three betrayals. Okay, so book stuff over. Right now on the show, Hisdar is not a main character, and he's not listed as a main character for season five, but by attaching himself more to Daenerys, he could become a main character in season six, if he's still around. A really good example of this is what happened with the Ramsay Bolton character, formerly Ramsay Snow. Initially, he was a relatively minor character on the show. By attaching himself to the Reek storyline, he became a really big character now in season five. In the books, it's a little more nebulous as to like who the most important characters are. Just the sheer amount of characters is so much greater than the, what they have on the show. And the problem on the show is, is that the camera can only focus on certain characters at certain times. It's just one of the unfortunate realities of making television. You can only fit so many people in 10 hours of television. On to number two, Sir Jorah will fight his way back into Daenerys' inner circle. The last time we saw him, he'd been kicked out of Daenerys' court. We don't really know where he is right now. We might see him in episode one. He started out in season one as a spy for Robert Baratheon. Over the course of that, that first year, he drank the Kool-Aid super hard and started serving Daenerys in a more earnest way. Whenever Barristan found the pink letter, I mean, they did a little bit differently on the show, but someone informed him that Jorah was informing for the Baratheons. He tried to explain what was going on, but they, they weren't having any of it. They kicked him out anyway. Based on the trail of footage, somehow he ends up in the fighting pits as a gladiator. This is another big change that I think they're going to have to make from the books because Jorah is a lot more mobile in the books, like he travels a lot more. So I think that they're just going to simplify that and he'll wind up in the fighting pits. But I think that the way he winds up in the fighting pits will be very similar to what happens to him in the books. One of the big problems in season five is that certain characters wind up with Daenerys way faster than they do in the books. And because all their plots are tied together, if you change what one of those characters does, you have to change what all the other characters do too. It's just a butterfly effect. So make as many like Russell Crowe gladiator jokes as you want, but I feel like it's going to be kind of the same deal with him. Somehow he'll get tied up in the slave trade and get thrown in the gladiator pits when they find out that he's a badass fighter. So people will try to make money on him. Then based on what he does in Daznak's pit, he winds up back in Daenerys' good graces. But onto my number one prediction, Daenerys will ride Drogon. It's the one big dragon related thing that the show has not done yet that would be a perfect WTF moment. What's more badass than Daenerys riding a dragon? Maybe like an ice dragon, but that remains to be seen. That's still a myth. Really, there's only so many things you can do with dragons that the show has not done yet. I feel like putting her on the back of a dragon would be a way to address a lot of the chaos that's going on in Marine with the Sons of the Harpy, as we see in the trailer. What better way to make your enemies shut up than to show them that you will roast them with the dragon if they don't fall in line? The books have only just started to address using dragons in battle in a historical sense, like Aegon's Conquest, The Princess and the Queen. But there was this really awesome story from Aegon's Conquest that I think offers some info about how Daenerys might use her dragons in the future. 
There was this one battle where Aegon was going up against this big force, and instead of charging into battle, he just he sent his dragons in to light the battlefield on fire, the entire battlefield. Instantly, the other army surrendered without a single sword drawn. Sending dragons into battle is like flipping the table in a card game. Daenerys hasn't learned how to do that yet. Like she's used them, but she doesn't have really precise control of them. I feel like that's the direction we're headed in season six. Like eventually she will figure out how to use them in a very controlled way. Right now, Drogon kind of comes and goes as he pleases. The last time she used them to roast the city, it was more of a reflex. What I'd really like to see in season six is her get to the point where she can use them over long distances in really calculated ways. That's really, I think, what it's going to take to rally everyone to her cause, like even her enemies, and make the lords of Westeros start shitting their pants. So here's my big question for you guys. How long do you think it's going to be before we see Daenerys use her dragons in a really big battle? The way they're escalating things so quickly and cutting out stuff from the books, I feel like we're going to get big battle dragons by season six. Quick side note too, they actually, they just released episode titles for five, six, and seven. Episode five is called Kill the Boy. Episode six is Unbowed, Unbent, Unbroken. That's just the, the motto from House Martell if you haven't read the books. And episode seven is called The Gift. My next bonus video is probably gonna be another character video, so be sure to subscribe to get it. And if you have any requests, feel free to leave them in the comments. Which actually reminds me, congratulations to Alexi Dominguez. You win this week's giveaway. It's a $20 Amazon gift card. Be sure to message me on the, on the back end of my channel so I can get your contact info. This is really weird, exciting thing that's gonna happen the weekend episode one premieres. Marvel's Daredevil is dropping on Netflix the Friday before Game of Thrones episode one airs. I haven't figured out everything completely, but it's also the week of the Walking Dead finale. So there's going to be a whole lot of like special Game of Thrones, Daredevil, and Walking Dead stuff that week. So it's going to be a lot of fun. Right now, in case you guys haven't seen it, you can click here to learn what HBO is planning for Game of Thrones after season six. And you can click here to learn about the first couple of episodes in season five. Thank you so much for watching. So let's all high five. I'll see you guys tonight for Walking Dead.